This video is by Flurby. Uh, this video is talking about how we can uh, fix tunneling in Dead by Daylight. There's been a lot, a lot, a lot of ideas uh, over the course of DBD's lifespan on how to fix the idea of, of tunneling in Dead by Daylight. Um, or even arguing between people is if tunneling should be something that should be even looked at at all. Is it fine the way it is? Um, so, um, yeah, make sure you click that link that I just put in the in the uh, in the Twitch chat and for you guys that are watching this on YouTube. It'll be down in the description below because uh, this is how you support the official release of the videos that we watch because this is made possible by somebody else's content. So, yeah, make sure you support that. Um, like I said, there's been plenty of uh, ideas on how to fix or alter tunneling in Dead by Daylight's history, and all of which kind of have an exceptional problems. <laughs> so it's always funny to look at these. Um, it's kind of like DBD's greatest mystery is like, well, yeah, we know that if somebody camps and tunnels at five gens, it's really excessive and dumb and really hard to counterplay. But like, what do we do to stop that? And what measures do we do that don't take it away from people who use it in a in a normal sense of like, hey, somebody's not dead by two gens. I need to make that happen. Because that's usually the flip side of this argument is like, People try to remove tunneling entirely. And tunneling can be a, a fair tool that you use at one or two gens to get somebody out of the game uh, that is kind of like slipping out of your control um, for no fault of really your own. So you kind of have you kind of run into this like this juxtaposition of you want to take it away from the people who use it to play DVD like a comp game at like four or five gens, but you don't want to take it away from the people that use it in a fair sense at like two or three gens or less. So yeah, that's kind of the issues. I talk about stuff. If you frequently play or watch DBD, then you know about tunneling. In order to remove a survivor from the game early on and to gain a huge advantage, the killer prioritizes a specific prioritizes. survivor over the others and hooks them in relatively quick succession until they're out. It's a pretty unfun strategy to play against as a survivor, and it feels yeah. And I would argue, I would argue with that Zan with like the entire player base. I feel like sweaty players actively hurt Dead by Daylight. Sweaty play people who play this game like it like it's in a comp setting in pub public matches actively hurt the game's health. They just do. They just do. Like at the end of the day, it's behavior's like fault to like that they allowed something in the game that would even do that, and it's ultimately up to them to fix it. But it's it's the player base that treats it like diet comp and sweats so hard that you know they feel like they're winning a McDonald's gift card afterwards, but on both sides that make the game a miserable experience for everybody. Yeah, whether it's a bugger feature or changes. Yeah, people just people love like this game for some reason just inherently has bullying baked into it. And if people can find a way to bully the other side, they'll do it. Whether that be through overpowered perks or a bug exploit or something, people gravitate towards treating the other side like garbage. And they just do. They just they just do. Yeah, exactly. Hags. The the patch where where sloppy was broken. Like the the patch where sloppy was broken, you saw sloppy on almost every killer. The patch where sloppy was bugged and it was really really good, it was almost on every killer. We live in a community of people that just love to treat the uh, like the people on the other end of the screen like garbage, like absolute garbage, and it's just it's just sucky. It's sucky that that's our community. That you have to do it as the killer sometimes just to keep up. Unfortunately for the game's health, it's a very popular thing for killers to do because the 3v1 advantage that it grants is just so huge. Folks like Each. Otz and Scott Jund have talked about potential solutions to solve this. There were ideas around mechanically empowering survivors against tunneling or mechanically rewarding killers for spreading hooks, which all brought some other kind of serious problems with them. Yep. There was also more of a people-based approach with a kind request for the community to change for the better. <laughs> I just don't think that's going to happen. No, because like, because DBD people, I'm going to say this. I've played uh, a lot of games either through like actual competitive, like through like actual tournaments and stuff. Um, or also just like, you know, casual competitive, which is just like grinding ranked for, for, um, like high titles and that sort of thing. DBD is the little safe space where you get to play sweaty and the the asymmetrical the nature of the game will allow you to succeed without skill. That's just that's just the hard that's that, that's just the hard pills to swallow. It, it just is. Is that DBD people? There are certain people that play this game because they quite literally can't hack it in actual competitive environments. They just can't. They can't go to a fighting game tournament and win. They can't 
They can't go through a, like a, a formal ranked mode in another game and grind out rank. They can't do it. So they hide in DBD where they rely on the asymmetry and the, uh, and the lack of balance in the game to stomp people for free. And that is, unfortunately, one of the things that really drives people to play this game. It is an appeal of the game is that I don't have to be that good and I can just bully people. And that goes for Survivor Rank Killer. I don't have to be that good at the game and I can just bully people. It, 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 it's, for lack of a better term, it's small PP energy. It's, 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 ins I'm a little insecure, little rat energy, but irregardless, it is true. That is an appeal of Dead by Daylight. I would like it to. DBD killer players tunnel because it's easy and strong. That's just what humans do. It's the path of least resistance. The community isn't just going to change for some goodwill, even though I do agree that it should, and I like that approach a little more. If we want to really prevent tunneling, we have to make changes to the core game system to take tunneling from possible to impossible. In a moment, I'm going to introduce an idea that uproots something that's been in Dead by Daylight for basically its entire lifetime just so tunneling can be fixed. I invite you to listen with an open mind and let the possibility marinate in your brain for a little before you completely reject it. Okay. After giving you the main idea and a few sub-variations of it, I'm going to go in depth about how this core change would affect gameplay for survivors, killers, overall perk metas, and finally some problems and special considerations to be made with this sort of idea. I'll add the timestamps on screen for a little bit and in the description of course so you can always go back to certain sections. So, the way to fix tunneling is to introduce a shared survivor hook pool. A total number of hook stages that each survivor player draws from in order to stay alive when they get hooked. I've heard this to referred this to before because this is something that's in uh, uh, Smash for um, for when you when you guys play teams is that um, you can steal stocks from each other. So like if somebody's just getting like tunneled out, um, people have suggested that you can like give them your hook states because you know you're you may be better at chasing you. They may not be going after you um, because you're like obsession. They have to build stuff like that. So I've heard people, I don't know where he's going with this, but I've heard people suggest the, uh, like, stealing stock from, like, Smash. That's like a... I have to reduce the total number of hooks in the game. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, about that a little this. bit more in the problems and considerations section. When all the shared hooks have been depleted, there are a couple different variations of what could happen in the end game. In the first flavor, when there are no more hooks, it becomes equivalent to if all survivors were on death hook in the current system. For any given survivor, one more hook means they're sacrificed and out of the trial. In the second flavor, rather than needing one final hook per survivor to take them out, the game would immediately end upon hook pool depletion. This could make use of something like the finisher Mori system that was in PTB a few months ago, but I don't really like this one as much as the first flavor because the transition would probably be a bit clunky and it could be Super seen as nanny. Like public <laughs> shaming or humiliation That's of funny. the last survivor. Maybe a third flavor could just make the survivors moreable when the hook pools run out. This makes plenty of sense to me in terms of game mechanics, but it might be more of a thematic issue because it's not resolving in a bunch of sacrifices to the entity. I guess neither is the finisher Mori, though. I was level 2 Legion and level 12 stars. Can be used for more jerks now? Yeah, it's just like designs, it's just like. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's always been a thing in this community because formerly it was the survivor aspect, right? It's formerly was mostly the survivor end of things because it used to be the power role, right? And now it's more mixed because while survivor still has the strongest role, um, the gap between it is much shorter. So you have killer kind of like stomping a lot more in pubs, um, just as a role. Um, so you just end up in this situation where like both sides are kind of like agitated because they're both like struggling to bully the other. <laughs> Which is just not something that, you know, and not something that's, like, good. That's not something we should have been striving for in the first place, is the, the ability to bully the other side. Because, like, now that, that both sides are having a harder time bullying each other, it's like, everybody's mad. <laughs> you know? It's just weird. Anyway, regardless of which version you choose, let's talk about what it would do for the game. First of all, like the video title says, tunneling would be fixed because it would be literally impossible to get someone out of the game early. Survivors would receive quite a large buffer before they can be fully I mean, but, but like, what's my question? My question here with this is like, so we're if we're operating in, 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 in our world where like BT's base kit, would it not be easier just to like complete the, the health pool 
like the if we're going by a health pool, like a hook counter pool instead of like two per survivor, it's just like it's just like twelve for everybody. Like once and once we hit twelve hooks, like the game ends. Would it not be easy to just like sit next to hook, eat through endurance, and just rehook the same person? Because chasing somebody who's injured, even if you have to hit them through like a health state of endurance real quick, um, that chase is still easier than going after the unhooker, right? Theoretically, is it tunneling someone still an easier chase than going after the unhooker? Especially if you're in a situation where you're like at a hook where you can just wait out the BT. Like if you can wait, and then you can just deplete. Th you can just run through. You can just run through the uh, the hook pull quicker that way. It's still more efficient to go after the same person. Moved from the trial. If the killer comes back for you off the hook, it's not the end of the world. There's still plenty of space to play. This would actually create an incentive for players who had a poor first chase to stick around and not DC immediately. Yeah, but like he's not addressing like. What's stopping somebody from just going after the same person over and over and over again? Because that because the person coming off hook is still at a disadvantage because they're they're injured, so they're an easier chase, especially if you can just wait out the BT. They're still the easier chase. So if you don't address that, it doesn't matter if the hooks are coming from a hook pool or from a from the whole team. You're just gonna sit there at hook and just try to deplete as much of the hook pool with one person as possible. You're going to use them as a resource to deplete the hook pool. <laughs> People take the game. New to external fighters. Yeah, the anonymity of the gaming world allows people to act all sorts of ways, which is absolutely disgusting. It's very depressing. A fluke down or not, because they're no longer halfway to their demise right off the bat, should the killer try to abuse them, they now have a much better opportunity to prove themselves and make good use of the rest of the team's hook stages instead of immediately going into that dreaded 3v1 scenario. This benefit can also make archive challenges and Yeah, but but the alternative here is in your idea of the hook pool since you mentioned like having people be like moriable uh once the hook pool is gone or everybody be death hooks so the hook pool is gone. You get one bad random. Like you have a random that literally can't chase. Like they just suck. <laughs> They're just bad at chase and they 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 suck. Um What's stopping from the killer from just like hooking that person and just continually de depleting the whole team's hook state uh, pool? Um, depleting the whole team's hook state pool um, with one person and then just killing the rest. There's there's no function for that yet. And if he doesn't address that, that, that makes this whole system kind of a bust. Perk builds that threaten to throw the game a bit more bearable. Now you can do your challenge, pull off the fancy gimmick, eat a hook, and get back into the game because you're not dead yet. And if one of case doom survivors kills everybody, you literally, that literally means it does. That the gen rushing ones or otherwise full meta perk builds are being used a bit less. Kind of going in the other direction now. New team strategies could emerge because survivors wouldn't have to worry about spreading hooks as a necessity if they wanted to get a four-person escape. If you're familiar with competitive Super Smash Bros. Melee doubles, think about yep, something that's like what I talked about. tanking. In DBD terms, yep. basically certain survivors could play in a very risky manner, being in charge of looping or taking aggro from the killer, while others could play more defensively, specializing in stealthing out and doing gens, but not necessarily being a detriment to their whole team if they decide to stick to that rather than going to take a hit for someone who would have been on death hook in the current game system. On the killer side of things, this would bring about much more interesting gameplay and strategy. Tunneling, or even soft tunneling, whatever that is, is no longer such an obvious best choice as an overall game plan. They would have to weigh the time. Yeah, if somebody DCs, do they? You, does your pool just go down like crazy? And then suddenly, just like, yeah, if you, if somebody DCs, like, does the pool just go down drastically? And suddenly, like, they can just like go after one bad chaser over and over and chew through the health states really quickly or the hook states really quickly. Like that's like, yeah. It would take to wait for their target to be unhooked versus using that time to just get in a new chase. There's no strict benefit to chasing the same person anymore. Since yes, there is. Really get a survivor out early. Yes, there is. Oh my god, I didn't mean to click early. that. Yes, there is. They are an easier chase. This, pr <laughs> you are missing the fundamental like thing aspect of this game that somebody who comes off hook and is injured is already an easier chase than the person that is the unhooker unless the unhooker is also injured it will always be easier to chase the person 
It will always be easier to chase the person who came off hook than the one who did the unhooking. And this idea completely foregoes that fact and just says, bah, it's just fine. There is no advantage to chasing the person that just came off hook. Yes, there is. It's the easier chase. Especially if you can wait out BT. Especially if you can wait out BT. And if this just isn't going to get addressed, this just isn't going to work. Tunneling is just going to become not more efficient, but like you could essentially chew through the health states of other survivors by just sitting at hook and tunneling the person that's already injured. I think very early on in the match would be even less viable than it is now. If you stay there for the duration of the entire hook pool while there's still gens remaining, you're guaranteeing a 1k. And this no. isn't the guaranteed 1k that a Bubba with deadlock, no head, no way out gets. It's an actual, you aren't getting more than one kill unless they super hard greed 1k. If it's unsafe to unhook, survivors just won't do it anymore because they have that buffer, they have the leeway to. This design would make killers I don't think so. finding those new chases quickly rather than hanging around the hook to advance their win condition. Because of the reduced total number of hooks in the game, long, boring slugging would also be heavily discouraged. Killers might still go for the occasional multi-down snowball, but intentional hard slugging and leaving them there. No, that's instead. exactly what they'll do. That's exactly what they'll do. They'll hook one person and they'll proxy, try to have a quick chase with the uh, the guy who's going for the unhook. If they realize that a somebody's coming from coming to like a third survivor's coming to help with the unhook, they'll just chase them. Or they just snowball with this. Yeah, they will slug. They will slug and create this situation. Like, no, that's exactly what they'll do. They'll try to intercept savers and continue to tunnel. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's my problem with Lassender. Because, like, you're being punished for somebody else playing bad. Like, now now the guy, the, 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 the idiot who doesn't know how to chase and just wants to, to, to camp and tunnel to win his games is going to affect my hook states. Like, I'm going to be in a bad spot because that guy wants to sit at hook. Not the survivor that gets caught and camped and tunneled. I now have to deal with it as well. Instead of just hooking them is way worse now because each hook would progress the game so much more than before. Basically, the amount of BM or problematic killer strategies, the number of easy outs, is reduced. Killers would now have to make intelligent decisions to chase the right survivors in the right areas. This is mostly- You mean like somebody who's injured? You mean like somebody coming right off hook? Like that person, yeah. Okay. This with the current game, but the hook pool system would absolutely mandate it. Also, hooking a survivor who ran them for two or three gens and then switching targets is not a wasted investment anymore. It could actually be in the killer's best interest to survey Why? multiple survivors and learn their playstyles in order to get quicker chases in the mid to late game. Now, no. there's one more easy out that How I does it do that? You just said it does, but you didn't explain how it did it. No, quick getting as many quick hooks as possible is still the best way to eat through a, a hook pool. So no, chasing somebody who's a good looper is actually even worse in your system than it is in current DVD. It's the opposite. I haven't talked about yet, and that is the gen lock or the three gen strategy. If the survivor hook pool were to be implemented, this strategy might actually become a little bit more prevalent than it is now. People are going to look for their easy out, and if the other ones don't exist, they may come to this. However, I think it would be a little bit easier to stomach in this case, because it would also be a lot harder to pull off when the match can't become a 3v1 so early on. Four survivors can create- Oh yeah, just just, just to make matches 20, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, let's, let's just do that. Let's make Although the match even longer. Definitely be really boring even longer. Even longer DVD matches. matches. Let's way, go. I said this would be how to fix tunneling, not the entire game. This unsolved problem is just one of the trade-offs. Honestly, I don't know- uh, I, I still- I'm still- You, you are- I feel like with this creator, they just have completely foregone the idea that the person being chased off hook is still the like the easiest chase. And until they address that, like this whole idea just goes out the window. This whole idea just goes out the window. Because it's still it, the easiest chase is still the person who came immediately off hook. And until they address that, it's just like not worth it. Do to fix Genlock besides changing a few problematic perks. Uh, but if you have an idea, let me know, I guess, and maybe we can turn that into a future video. Speaking of perks, let's talk a little bit more about what would happen to builds with a shared hook pool system. Tiller perks that encourage you to spread hooks across multiple survivors become way more attractive. Grim embrace, no way out, gift of pain. Because you don't get that three v one advantage so quickly anymore, the game would no longer punish you for not tunneling. So this opens the door to maximize the potential of these kind of perks. No. Buff them, introduce new ones, I think this consequence would be great for the game. To be able to spread those hooks, 
Aura and chase perks become more valuable, maybe even over gen stalling in some cases. A coup de gras and I'm all ears meta would be legitimately exhilarating. Hex Ruin currently deactivates when the first survivor dies. This change seemed to be added in to punish using this perk while also tunneling, but since removing survivors early can't happen anymore, this unpopular pick in the current meta suddenly offers way more value overall because it would never have its own early exit. Unless of course it's cleansed, but that's always the risk with Hexes. You don't get punished by your perks for playing to the optimal win condition anymore. It seems like he's more preoccupied with like... Not preventing tunneling, but preventing a 3v1. That seems to be like where we're kind of off the tracks a little bit. This this creator is more um convinced or seems more focused on like preventing the trap like the, the sucky parts of playing a 3v1 than they are actually preventing the tunneling that puts them in that situation in the first place. Cause the this this idea doesn't actually fix tunneling, because you can still chew through a bunch of easy health states by tunneling in this system because there's no there's nothing in there to do it it just means that like it doesn't become a three three v one as quickly yeah that that's it <laughs> you're just delaying the three v one you're not really preventing tunneling hex devour hope would need a change to keep its stack requirements in line with the new pace of the game or maybe not this could be a very dangerous perk if it gets buffed too much back on the survivor side of things Deliverance and Slippery Meat would definitely need to be reworked. Maybe they only function within the first third or first half of the hook pool and then deactivate beyond that. I think this brings along a cool perk design concept where survivors could get different abilities when the hook pool is very full or very empty. Think about something like a, a hook pool based hope. Now honestly that would probably be ridiculously strong, but it's an avenue to be explored. And, and you could do it with Killer Side too. Yeah, like the idea is like let's let's try to prevent the three v one situation from happening, um, like in delaying that, which this does do. But if you're trying to prevent tunneling, which is like one person not getting to play the game because like the killer's just hunting them down, the killer will still be incentivized to hunt the same person down to chew through the health pill as quick as possible. And if they do do that, that puts everybody else on death hook or moriable <laughs> without that they themselves ever being. Uh, making misplays or putting themselves in bad situations it just you know it it creates new problems off the record is probably way too strong with a shared hook pool um it's already too strong it would definitely need to be reduced so? to just two stacks per game to keep it comparable to where it is now and keep people from using it even more offensively um one would probably be fine too the perk just does a lot uh, DS, Decisive Strike, it already only works once and then with the three second duration. I don't know if it would be more or less popular because people definitely wouldn't want two quick back to back hooks in a shared hook pool, but then yep. also the killer is probably less. Yeah, likely. you mean like the killer going back to hook and tunneling the survivor off. Two quick back to back hooks taken away from an entire pool would suck, right? That's why that's why we don't we, we don't want that, so We do that yeah. in the first place, um, or just have to be something playtest. Because killers would be even less likely to slug, I feel like Unbreakable would also drop off, although I don't really see it that much these days anyway. It's just more the threat of the perk existing in the game is what's shaped that kind of gameplay. Reassurance might need a nerf, might be fine, because camping is also worse with these hook changes. They could hit it with a limit on consecutive uses, but I don't think it would be that big of a deal anymore. And now we get to the problems and special considerations of this shared hook pool system. Like I said way earlier, the number of hooks in the current game is way too high to be the total for the hook pool. Even if you subtract the death hooks, eight is probably too much as well. Yeah, so, so like, like let's see this from like like this problem, right? And the and the thing that we're fearing the most, right? Like so, if there's an eight eight hook pool, quick thirty second. 30, 40 second chase, one gone, seven. We're at seven. We're at seven, right? Um, somebody comes from the, they're proxying, they come from the unhook. Um, they get an injury, an injury they trade, um, and then they wait out BT down the person. Slug the person down the other guy that they injured earlier. So then they hook the person they slugged earlier. We're down to six. Hook the person they just tunneled. Now we're down to five. So now somebody's going to come in probably while he's, you know, 
hooking the uh, hooking the person he the second person unhook them. So he goes back to that hook, maybe injures the person that unhooked that guy, tunnels that survivor that just came off hook, downs them, hooks them. We're at four. And now, hopefully, they haven't reset, right, from the person that was initially injured. goes The first person he hooked goes, finds them, downs them pretty quickly because they're still injured. Now we're at three. <laughs> now we're at three. And now all he has to do is kind of, like, hang out, right? Kind of proxy hook again. Maybe they reset, come in fully healthy, force the trade again, get the injury, down the person that he, uh, da- tunnel the person down. And then slug and attack the unhooker. Hook the person you tunneled. Hook the person. Hook the unhooker. Now we're down to one. Do you do you see how this is like? Do you see how this is like very easy to chew through? I don't. I feel like that's kind of like. I feel like that's where the disconnect is happening. Like I don't think I don't think this creator sees how easy it is to chew through that many health states or that many hook states. So are very powerful when they're all alive so something more in the range of four to six hooks is probably about right wow These days four after four, hooks four. Are mash, four you imagine let's do, let's do that let's do the minimum four four let's do this for four four right so you find somebody you find somebody right four four right you find somebody um quick 30 to 40 second chase down them hook we're at three proxy the hook save force a trade tunnel the person down that came off hook we're at two Slug the person that you, uh, or slug, slug the person you tunneled to go after that person down them. Hook the person you tunneled. Hook the person that went for the save. We're already at one. We're already at one. <laughs> just, just from, just from a one, from one hook trade, from one forced hook trade, we have one resource re- left for the entire freaking team. For the entire freaking team. One bad hook trade situation causes us to be on our last hook for the whole team. Wow. What stop people from slugging hard? Nothing. Apparently, the system inherently disincentivizes slugging. But he hasn't really explained how, besides just kind of like the system itself existing. You can probably tell who's going to win most of the time anyway. If you think back to the variations and you want to go with the second one where the game just ends when the hook pool is depleted, you probably want to add an extra hook or two. The on-hook interactions need to be looked at too. I think it makes enough sense for the hooked survivors to enter struggle state when the hook pool has been depleted by half, but when should they be allowed to attempt a 4% chance and pull themselves off? We probably can't allow it to happen for the whole first half of the hook pool. Survivors that want to troll and grief their teammates could destroy way more hooks than normal, and I think it would just be very toxic to enable something like that. Honestly, the 4% mechanic is kind of silly in the first place, but uh, the game could maybe just keep track of if that survivor has been hooked or not, and only let them uh, attempt something like that on their first hook. And I guess if we don't like the idea of that limbo state in between the first hook and the hook pool being in struggle state, um, you could just make any hook after the first one also be struggle state, rather than waiting for that pool to come down by half. With a reduced total hook count, if a survivor disconnected and took three hooks with them like it does today, yep. that would probably spell immediate doom for everyone else. It's already rough being 3v1 and very awkward in this game system. It should probably just take away one stage from the pool. Behavior would also need to tune their skill-based matchmaking like in a very different way. To kill even one survivor in this shared hook pool system, the killer has accomplished a pretty great feat of draining that pool. After that, knocking down the rest of the survivor dominoes is way easier since they'd all be on death hook or more evil. Mm -hmm. Rebalancing of what a win or a loss is and adjusting the the behind-the-scenes MMR gains would be required. So that's pretty much it. The general game plan and consequences for adding a shared hook pool system to DBD in order to combat tunneling. Digest it for a little bit and maybe let me know what you think. It doesn't combat tunneling, it combats, uh, it delays 3v1. What you have essentially done is you've delayed the 3v1, but you have not at all addressed tunneling. And um, if anything, you've made hook trades more valuable. You've made hook tradings, hook trades more valuable for the killer. Because now, tunneling down the person that just came off hook and then slugging them and going after the person that did the unhooking, who probably took a health state to train them to begin with, um, like, it's just like, 
it's just not worth it. <laughs> it's just not. Like, it's like, you are, like, hook trading suddenly becomes extremely dangerous in the system, which is often the only way you can get a survivor off hook if a killer is just outright face camping, is to go trade. So that actually makes hook trading way more dangerous and way more beneficial for the killer to just sit there and face camp because now I get to, 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 to go through two health states of not two separate survivors, but the whole team now by just sitting at hook. So I, I... Problems that I'm not thinking of or didn't talk about. I'm sure there has to be something. Balancing an asymmetrical game is not easy. Yeah, you didn't. You just didn't address at all what you do about somebody who's just like face camping and then deciding to tunnel afterwards. Like you, you just make it like 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 we've been saying. It seems like you just were more preoccupied with delaying the three v one, which is nice, I guess. But like this is at all it did, does not de incentivize tunneling, and if anything, tunneling will continue to happen and continue to occur, just so they can chew through. If anything. Tunneling might become arguably more popular of a play so they can chew through the, the pool quicker. Or at least camping. At least, like, camping, proxying, and face camping will definitely become more advantageous so they can they can chew through more health states. And in that case, unless you're in a, a four-man swift where you can be like, just leave me, do the gens, like... Once again, you're in a situation with like a solo queue or even like a duo or a trio where like all it takes is one miscommunication of somebody taking a bad hook trade and suddenly like the whole team's down two or three hooks. Like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That was definitely not what I thought was going to come out of this. This is definitely a new idea. This is definitely not an idea I've heard of before. So that's in that regard, that's pretty, uh, you know, interesting <laughs> that 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 uh. It's not something I've ever heard of, but until you address like that actual like, how do you prevent the person that's coming off hook from just being an easy chase and getting just like tunneled down? Um, there's no way. There, there's the, the 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 none of this really matters. No, this really matters because as long as you can just have an easy chase right off the hook and force hook trades, like you can just chew through this pool really easily. Um. So unless there's a way to prevent that, 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 that that's even scary because you because you talk about the idea of putting it possibly down to like four hook stays. Like I said, situation, uh, fine first chase, 30, 40 second chase. We're already down to three. I proxy the hook. Uh, some random who's not in our swift comes over and uh, he gets hit on the way to the save trades. I down the hook saver and then I tunnel down the person that just came off hook. And then I hook the I, I hook the hook saver. I hook the guy I tunneled. And I come back to hook uh, while they're unhooking the other guy, force another trade, and we're already done. We're already out of our hook states. Start start mooring everybody. You know, like I just don't. That that, that just seems like it makes it like more rewarding <laughs> to play like that because now you're affecting the whole team and not just one person, which is crazy, right? Sure, it'd feel good because you'd see that guy who was like <laughs> immersing a whole match suddenly die. Make you feel good from that perspective on Survivor. You'd be like, haha, you immersed and now you, you're still death hook. <laughs> you know, but like, I don't know. Like, the idea of people like forcing hook traits actually seems more advantageous. It's a product of people are slugged. This is just hook states in general. Like, instead of there being two people, like two hooks per person, there's like a pool of like four to, what did he say, 48? Because he said 12 was too much. So there's just a pool to 48 hooks. That, you know, once you get through all those hooks, people are either all death hook or all moriable. So that's all it is. There is no actual mechanism to stop the tunneling. It's just supposed to make the tunneling suck more. It's supposed to make it, like, you know, make the 3v1 situation happen later. Um, as opposed to stopping the tunneling like it says it's going to. <laughs> Like, there's no actual mechanism in this idea to stop tunneling. It's just de-incentivize it by giving a, uh, preventing a, a three-hook death. That's essentially all it is. It's removing the three-hook death and saying, yeah, that fixes tunneling. But it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It just means that, like, if you tunnel the, if you tunnel a weak link enough or force a bunch of hook trades, you can affect the whole team instead of uh, one person.
Yeah, we already covered uh, eight, right? Covered eight, same situation. 30-second chase. Seven hooks. Um, force a hook trade down the unhooker. Uh, slug. Tunnel the, uh, the, the, tunnel the hook survivor. Come back. Hook the person that I, I initially slugged. And then I hooked the tunneler. Or to hook the tunneled survivor. We're already down to five. Um, come back to hooks. They've probably unhooked uh, the initial guy by now. Um, tunnel him, slug. <laughs> tunnel him, and then slug to go get the other person. So we're already down to four when we go back and hook him. So we're already we you, you could eat you could eat through you could eat through half of the hook states even at like eight, and with two bad interactions. Period. It it just doesn't work like he thinks it works. <laughs> it just doesn't work like he thinks it works. It, it, it's I feel like he did not think about how easy it would be to burn through the the hook stages if somebody plays like a jerk. But you know, on the flip side, if you want to make it like twelve hooks like normal, somebody who's playing fairly and very nice and just wants to go for chases is gonna have an awful time, right? Thirty forty second chase hook. Let's say we have like who have like, let's think about like eight eight hooks with like a normal like I don't want to tunnel at all I don't want to proxy camp at all killer 30 40 second chase first hook find somebody else probably like 20 ish seconds 30 40 second chase so another minute finally we get another hook finally we get another hook right um so at this point um it's been over a minute so uh it's been over a minute and a half or close wait let's see 30 40 second chase and then probably 20. Yeah, so it's been about a minute and a half. So if if all three survivors are spread out on a gens, um, that's we're down to two gens now. Um so that's cool. If everybody was efficiently on a gen, uh, at this time we have we have three gens done. All right, so we're at two. Um so I go and I find a survivor that's completely fresh, chase them for 30, 40 seconds, hook them. Travel across the map for another 20, 30 seconds to find somebody. Then 30, 40 seconds chasing them. Now I'm at four, but then we could have all the gents done. So, yeah. Somebody who's playing nice and not tunneling anybody, going only for fresh hooks. All gens are done, and there's four in the, left in the pool. So, like, it's punishing for players that don't want to tunnel and almost more rewarding for people that do want to, which is... If that's going to be the case, that's how our system already is. <laughs> it is already rewarding people who want to camp and tunnel and making it worse for people who don't want to. So why why would that be a thing? Because at least at least a, a good boy killer at, at that four hook stage like that we were just at where all the gens are done, he could tunnel somebody out then, right? At like one or one gen or the end game and get maybe a one or two K. He can't do that here. Because there's still four hook states he's got to chew through before he can actually kill somebody. So the person that actually wants to like play chases and not tunnel will end up losing a lot of matches under this health pool. But the person who wants to just force hook trades all day is going to chew through the health pool really quickly. So it's like... I feel like this creates worse situations. <laughs> you told me to stew on it. We've been talking about it for a little bit. I feel like this creates worse situations now that I think about it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this creates worse situations. I, I think it does. Mostly because it foregoes the actual tunneling interaction at the hook. Because, like, for example, this system, if for some reason you added, like, you know, the survivor while under endurance does have collision or something like that, that's an idea that's been thrown around, Um, the, 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 the person coming off hook is an easy chase. So then, yeah, then, yeah, that, a hook pull system makes more sense. But, like, the person coming off hook is still an easy chase. So, like, that's, <laughs> it all kind of, the house of cards falls apart. <laughs> Brain hates people? No, I just hate you. Nope. Hates just all yours. Weaker M1 killers can get left behind and create more Nurse Blight gameplay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Because Nurse and Blight can definitely slug a lot quicker. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think this creates more problems than it solves. I think I think it what it does succeed at, to give it credit, I think it does succeed at delaying the 3v1 situation. I think it does do that. Um. Is that worth it compared to the the snowball situation that happens later? I don't think so. But at least the 3v1 situation would be delayed under the system. I don't think it at all fixes tunneling, though. I think it just kind of, like, create, it, it creates a different dynamic. Like, instead of 
somebody being tunneled out early and having a crappy game as a 3v1, um, you have a game that, you know, the 3v1 happens at like one or two gens. And you're like, oh, okay, well, let's try to push out these final gens. But then at that point, everybody that gets down is going to get worried and the game's going to end really suddenly. <laughs> like, you're just kind of moving when the pain happens. You're not actually like, you're not actually like, preventing the pain you're just moving when it happens <laughs> so uh, yeah that's okay that's why but like that's it, it, there's nothing wrong with like like this is why this problem has never been fixed right because it's hard it's difficult like how do you fix this can you fix it every idea has holes in it every idea has holes in it and they're pretty substantial holes some majorly severe holes and all of these all of these, like he mentioned Scott, he mentioned Odds, both of their ideas also have major, major problems, <laughs> you know? So, it's it's why it's never been solved. So, yep, yep. It was a good try, though. It was a good try. Good try. Maybe we can go back to the drawing board, maybe address that, uh, the tunneling situation itself, instead of the hook situation, and maybe mem, um, mesh some aspects of both together and maybe it'll work out but for now i don't think so